So, okay, so thank you very much. Well, it's good to see all of you. Um, you know, I think today, I mean, I'm gonna race through this presentation because I know that, that there are many people, as I've been informed, who have uh, been waiting to speak, uh, to hear me speak about what's going on at the site. Because, uh, you know, everybody wants to know uh, where we are, what, what's been happening, uh, how far along the line we are. So we're gonna just go through this presentation very quickly. And so to leave some time to really focus on what I'd like to really discuss today, which is more around the, the technical breakthroughs that we were having at the, at the site and the, the fact that we really are compliant to the highest levels of ESG that exist on the planet. So uh, my name is Lewis Black. I'm the CEO and president of, of Almonte. We are currently under construction in South Korea, building and reopening the world's largest tungsten mine. Um, uh, essentially, Samdong has a legendary status within our sector. It contains the highest grades uh, and the longest, uh, the largest reserves. And it essentially, tungsten is basically found in every single element of every part of an economy in every nation. So only a little bit, but without that tungsten, that sector would fail. So whether it be military defense, semiconductors, microchips, mining, gas oil, drilling, um, cathodes, nanos, and batteries, but also in manufacturing of airplanes, in EVs, in, in uh, normal regular gasoline vehicles, uh, medical, it's in everything and therefore it is considered to be in the sort of top percentile of strategic metals on the planet by pretty much every nation that is out there. Um, we have been building or designing our Sandon project for four years. We recently announced earlier this year that the loan is complete and we have started the drawdown. And this marks obviously the transformational part of our company because we have managed to attract a very low interest uh, rate loan from what's considered to be one of the best lenders on the planet, which is KFW Apex Bank. It is uh, an extraordinary opportunity to lock in all of the value that would normally you'd see dissipated by the more traditional routes of financing that say junior mining companies would take. So this has been extremely positive for us, although a very long and arduous journey to get there. Um, you know, I think, you know, our stock has, has, has you know, it's, it's fared fairly well in, in recent times. Uh, so I, I can't complain, but ultimately, you know, the major shareholders in this are intrinsically involved with this company. So there's very much putting the money where the mouth is. We have a number of assets. We have our Portuguese asset, which is in operation and is producing. It's, it's an older mine, but this, this mine contains really the last bastions of operational knowledge to mine tungsten. Tungsten is a very difficult metal to mine, very difficult, and to process. This mine in Portugal has been running for 126 years. So it gives you an idea of the, of the size of it and the scale of it. And yes, it, you know, it's certainly an older mine, but that knowledge has been preserved and including all of the, the various schemes that we run for the apprenticeships means that we have all in-house the ability to construct, renovate or build pretty much everything, uh, which has obviously served us very well in our Samdong project, which is now under construction. Uh, a voucher shell is in permitting stage. It's something which we, we will permit at some point in the next few months, but our main focus obviously is Korea. And Los Santos is still in, in care and maintenance. This is a to be decided uh, project. Ultimately that plant in Los Santos will migrate its way to voucher shell. Um, tungsten price you know, has been uh, stable in the last, 12 months. It has stayed at, at, at sort of close to, to multi-year highs. And I think this bodes very well as the global economy will return at some point during next year. We'll see liquidity increase and the price of tungsten we expect to, 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 to raise quite considerably. I think it's worth pointing out that in the last three to four years, and, and it's, it's not diminishing in any way, geopolitical risk regarding procurement has just continued to increase. Korea, for example, imports 94.7% of their tungsten 
from China. Uh, and yet Korea is the largest consumer per capita in the world of tungsten through essentially the semiconductor battery and hard metal businesses. So, you know, I think all governments now have, have, have continued to turn their attention to what can we do to at least give ourselves the ability to have choice. And, and I think in that way, the advent of the build of Sandong is, is probably very timely, uh, even though, of course, that wasn't first and foremost in our mind when we were planning this four and a half years ago, it's one of the consequences of us now being in construction. Um, uh, you know, very briefly, yes, tungsten is seen in the technology metals, not just in the screens, uh, but it's also used in the batteries, the anodes and the cathodes, and also in the tungsten gas that we pump into every semiconductor. And so it has a, a, a good exposure, a very, very wide exposure to uh, technology. Um, uh, the project's under, you know, as I said, under construction. It's a vast deposit. Uh, in my lifetime, we'll never even see a fraction of what we actually have uh, under our belt. We work only two of the 10 areas that we are permitted for. And, and when I say permitted, we are permitted for every single metal, except for uranium. Uranium, I admit it, because uranium is, is can, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a more difficult thing, you know, from under an ESG uh, perspective. But we have a vast deposit of tungsten, which is actually, as you can see from this, this presentation, which is also 150 meters from a vast high-grade molybdenum deposit. So it is a very geologically unique deposit, and, but this is well recognized in our, in our sector. In our industry, this mine was always seen as the, the legendary one. Uh, we haven't got any better looking. I'll, I'll pass through this, but, but I've introduced this, this, this page on many occasions. Uh, peer groups, it, it's very difficult. Um, it, it's a very difficult uh, area to, to cover because ultimately our peer groups are, you know, basically in China because nothing else comes close to, to the scale of, of what we have, nor with our downstream program that we are now looking at implementing. Uh, in terms of the, the cost curve, look, we have the, the great advantage. It's high grade. And, and, and I'd like to say, you know, we, we've always developed technologies within our company to be cost competitive, but, but Sam Dong has given us an enormous head start because of its grade. Its grade has uh, allowed us to be very cost competitive when looking at the cost curve uh, through, through the world. Uh, it gives you a side of scale. It's huge. And it's a high level. Yes, we have offtake in place. The financing is done. And we have, uh, you know, the entire project has been designed to work under the equator principles, which is the highest level of ESG international standards that exist on the planet. And uh, an extraordinarily small number of projects actually are able to achieve that status of equa equator principles. Uh, as I said, it's under construction. And I know every shareholder that's watching this right now is saying, yes, but when are you gonna start the surface works? Well, patience, I will address that in a minute. Um, from a, as I said, geological point of view, the, the mineralization is, is, we even struggle to find barren areas to work for our addicts. Um, within two meters of the portal, we have vast amounts of, of, of veinless. I mean, it's just, it, 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 from that point of view, it is a struggle to follow a traditional, you know, block model because what barren areas do we have? We don't. But I think ultimately, after now working underground for almost two years, we we are at six months ahead of schedule, and we have a very good feel for the deposit, and that's why we started mine development so much earlier than the surface construction. Uh, in terms of, of the uh, milestones, they remain unchanged at, at this time. The main focus, the primary focus during this build is to remain on budget. That is actually, you know, my absolute um, red line. We have to remain on budget. And so we've had to, during this construction, be a little nimble and creative in finding savings to counter, obviously, as we're all very aware, there are dramatic inflationary effects. But at this moment, I'm still comfortably within uh, you know, from my finished product, uh, a finished project budget, I'm comfortably within, within my contingency. So we will continue being nimble and we will continue being creative to ensure that we keep on budget. 
Uh, Panascara, uh, look, you know, internally we have a love affair with this mine because of what it gives us. It, and it gives us the knowledge that we couldn't find anywhere else. And we would never have taken on the project of Samdong without this knowledge, because, you know, any new project is fraught with, with you know, risk. And we have been successful in everything that we've undertaken within Tungsten because of the team that we have. There's no other, you know, I can't say it's because we have got consultants or because of the amount of money we have, because we have neither in that sense. We have an extraordinary team and I, every shareholder that's with our Monty backs the team because they recognize that knowledge has enabled them to be extremely successful. Um, with Panascara, I mean, as an example, we just recently built in, it completely internally and designed an entire new tailings dam, um, uh, nine, give us another nine years of, of tailings disposal capacity, but everything was done in house and it was all signed off by the government, but that gives an idea of the kind of quality that we have within the company. And, and that's very important, as well as the fact that we actually just built the Iberian Peninsula's longest a conveyor of nearly 2000 meters, also with a 90, 90, a 90 degree uh, bank in it, uh, was also completely built, manufactured and designed in-house. Our reserves, yeah, we, 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 we have uh, sufficient reserves um, to make us by far the largest outside of China. And we only operate in safe jurisdictions, which is very important, not just for us, but also for our customers and our transparency and our ESG compliance. And in terms of ESG, this is not just exclusively for Samdong. We've now also begun to implement it in Portugal, in Panascara. So our, our net aim is that as a company, we'll be fully ESG compliant to the highest international standards within the next three years. So the project is underway. The impact of this project on, our, on us as a company will be extraordinary because the size of this project dwarfs everything else that we have. And, and, and combine that with the grade and combine that with the fact that we were able to design this project as we as operators felt it should be designed and to have Hatch as the independent engineer for KFW say this is an extraordinary goods a, 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 a approach has meant that, that we will expect to see quite dramatic increases in our revenue and earnings as this comes online. As I said, this is a project that is, is extraordinary. Now, what I really want to talk about, which is important, is what we've done in terms of innovation. The very shortly, either today or tomorrow, a, a very detailed um, animated video, three-dimensional video will be released which has been built and, and, and created by METSO, which will show our plant in detail. It'll show how the plant is essentially built in a way that is uh, almost non-existent in terms of its, its impact on surface. It is surrounded by a significant amount of landscaping and forest. Um, and it highlights the, the reality that in the 21st century, in order to comply to creative principles, we have to have virtually no recognizable impact. And it's taken us the best part of four years in design work to be able to meet that challenge with this Brownfields operation. Now, that is obviously uh, one major area, but then there's a, a lot of other smaller areas which are very important to recognize. So we've recently talked about the introduction of a 4G system underground, which we developed exclusively with Korea Telecom. So the, we got together with them three years ago and we started as operators designing a system that we felt would survive even the worst catastrophe underground. <clears throat> now, there has been comment from some of our engineers. That means that their family can ring them at any time, which we're not so happy about, but. But what's important about this system is not just about the safety applications of communication. It also ties in with our plan for autonomy in the future. So this system also is aligned with an electronic tag system, which means that we know in, in real time where everybody is at any one time. 
And it also senses if somebody falls over in a strange way, we know that there's been a problem so that it can be alerted. If someone strays into an area that we consider to be unsafe, they can be alerted. And we can also be alerted at surface about this. And that also ties into that ultimately within five years with the full electrification underground, the tramming that will be done on the ground will be autonomous, it will be automated. And those that equipment then will be able to sense all personnel through the electronic tag system. The this graph or this, this slide that you see now represents the first essentially three calls that have ever been made underground in South Korea or Southeast Asia. It's never happened before. Um, my understanding is there's only, I think, two mines in Canada and one in, in Australia that have similar systems. But it, it does highlight the fact that for a small company like ourselves, we as operators have always punched way above our weight. And that's why shareholders have supported us, because they recognize our team has done extraordinary things with the projects that we have, culminating in acquiring the world's largest tungsten mine. And they feel that given the importance of tungsten and given how we have approached the operation of this mine, it really will be at the technical forefront of what is possible. And this is not only important to us as operators to always strive to be better, but it's incredibly important to our customers because that transparency, that knowledge it is going, going to intensify as geopolitical risks continue to elevate. And just in case you're wondering that the, the slide, the picture on the right is yes, I am in my t-shirt because we, we actually uh, ran the emergency uh, CEO system, which woke me up in the middle of the night, much to the amusement of those underground, to ensure that it worked. Uh, but, but of course, I take the call because it's part of the emergency. Uh, uh, we have an emergency call signal on the phones to tell us, uh, to, to, to answer, of course, immediately. And uh, I, I think that we also have approached more traditionally our integration into the community. We've done this for many years in Portugal. There's really no separation between our community in Barocca Grande, which is the, the town that sits on top of the mine, and the mine itself. And we've really brought those lessons <clears throat> to Korea. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're paying over the odds to use local contractors or it, 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 it's not, it, it's about integration. It's one of the same. Remember, this town of Sandong was created for this mine back in the day. The reason we are able to get permits in this region is because of these residents, because they all have a connection to this mine. Getting permits in any democracy now is not for the faint-hearted. So the fact that you are intrinsically involved with the community is absolutely paramount. Their success is your success and your success is their success. And, and I think that's very prevalent in our Portuguese operation and continues to be. And again, going back to what I said about our customers and our lenders, this is very, very important. Uh, I, you know, this is the 21st century. There's no way to operate in isolation and, and it's important because everyone at our project is somehow or another connected to the community as vice versa. And, and so on that, I'm, I'm gonna bring it to an end to see, because I remember last time there was, there was quite a few questions. So I've given myself nine minutes uh, to answer any questions. Let's hope there are some this time. But, but um, I'm handing it back to you to see if, if, if you have any, Jim. This is very wise, Levis. Thank you very much for that. Another great presentation. Updates are amazing. Um, for people that do not work in the commodity sector, uh, maybe they cannot grasp the complexity of your achievements, but this is extremely impressive what's happening down there. Um, uh, as a commodity guy, personally, it's uh, it's extremely, extremely impressive. So congrats on that. Uh, we have a lot of questions. First one uh, would be from uh, Jens. How did the meeting with... KFW in Korea, go. Um, well, we're all still talking. So that was a positive. And, and I think they were very happy with the progress. We also spoke uh, about uh, the downstreaming, about the tungsten oxide uh, plant. They, were, they wanted to know more details about location. They wanted to speak more at length with the local government about this. It, it is fully supported by uh, local government. Um, it's a program that we will be releasing more information to the market about in the progress, but the meeting they brought the hatch came with them um, and it was a very successful meeting. I think it's been a while since they came, 
They were happy with where we were at. I think the third disbursement we received after the visit should verify that there was no issues, um, but also it was very helpful to have that conversation regarding the tungsten oxide plant, which they uh, are, are willing to support the debt portion of that. Perfect. Are you still planning a listing on Korea? And if so, when? Um, it's something which we would very much like to do. Obviously, the, the, there's certain criteria to meet to list. I prefer, given that there's no mining stocks listed in Korea, I prefer to open the project so that the, there to be a greater understanding of by, by essentially retail, especially, and institutional investors in Korea of what's going on. They can come and visit themselves. Let's uh, get our feet under the desk and then list properly. We're not Look, looking for further money, so let's let's you know use it, the strength of the project. It's easier to understand with positive cash flow than with uh, just spending money. C commodity is a difficult business, yes. just prior uh, in construction. Uh, has Alamanti already addressed potential large cost customers, except uh, Plan C, such as Samsung, regarding offtake agreements? Uh, no, at this time, there's no there's no need. Um, you know, our focus is is Plancy's meeting our terms of our offtake with Plancy, which is very important. That's first and foremost. Um, as the tungsten oxide develops, uh, as we look at the expansion underground uh, to to produce obviously tonnage from six hundred forty five thousand tons to one point two million tons, we will then look at how the South Korean government wishes to work with this. Remember, this is not just a Samsung or LG or SK issue regarding the dependency on one source. This is a, a, a South Korean governmental issue as well. So I, I would imagine that will be the last piece that we'll put together. But but predominantly, you know, our focus at the moment is our is our one off take there, which is Plancy. Perfect. Uh, ben is also asking, and this is an interesting question because I hear that a lot from uh, all parts, uh, but not really from people from the industry. Uh, in respect of the ESG, do you think that you can realize a premium on your stock stain spot market price? And if so, how much? Well, we have an offtake, <clears throat> which means it's obviously governed by a pricing mechanism, which obviously has the hard floor and no cap on the upside, but it's linked to a, a, a pricing mechanism of, of the London uh, Metal Bulletin. But anything in excess that's not covered by a, an offtake, you know, if we downstream, there's an increased margin. It, it's a point of discussion. We have, uh, you know, spoken previously that we have achieved, achieved premiums on our material from our Portuguese project because it produces the highest grade in the world, but, I think we are, um, I'm more interested in maximizing my value than just making a deal. So I think to answer that question is, let me see what I can do. But do you do, so maybe a sub question, do you see in, do you forecast in, 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 the, in the near future, um, ESG companies compliant getting uh, actually in the commodity uh, a, a premium or no. you see actually no, a don't. company going to an ESG and then that just being the norm? No, no, the norm is the ESG. You can't ask for a premium because you do things right. I mean, you know, yes, okay, you can say that your competitors in, in other jurisdictions don't have to do it right. Well, end of the day, the customer expects you to perform to a certain level. That's just the cost of doing business. You just have to be more efficient and lean in how you do it. But you shouldn't expect a premium because you do things correctly. You, you just, you have to, that is the price you pay for being able to supply the best customers in the world. This is a very interesting point of view. Um, I would like to continue on that, but I have two questions more from Bruce and we have still four minutes. Uh, so do you have an estimate for the uh, Sandong's reserve estimates will be updated with the information gathered during the recent underground work indications, uh, work indicating the grades in the original block models may need to be increased by 25 to 45%. The, the block models will be are already under, uh, you know, they're under review for, for updating. Uh, so we're going to, we've essentially stopped work um, underground now, and we're going to re restart, I believe, beginning of February, uh, because ultimately I'm, in, I'm in, basically installing transformers now. So the entire new electrical system is being installed underground. And, and I don't want anyone working under there when this is happening, because, you know, the two don't, you know, you've got engineers, you know, boomer operators who, Think they're the most important and then you know uh, electrical engineers thinking they're the most important and you mix those two together you can have problems so i'm ahead of schedule 
but but ultimately in terms of, of a revision of the joke and 43101, it's something I will look at uh, during the, the first you know quarter of next year. Once I've done my block models, I'll speak to the QP and, and see about a revision to, to upgrade the resource and what we've learned in the last two years. All right. And uh, you mentioned in the past that Sandang will have increased output right from the beginning rather than waiting 24 months after project completion. Does this mean that you will start processing 1.2 million tons of ore already in 25, 26, 27? I, I will look to, to, to increase my 1.2 uh, to, 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 to start processing 1.2 million tons. I will look probably toward the end of 24. That would be my, 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 my conservative estimate. I'll have the ability to do it underground earlier, yep. but I want to make sure that everything is in place for my downstream. For, you know, I'm not going to rush to the finish. I'm going to walk there carefully because mining is a bottomless pit of disaster if you don't get it right. And once the snowball starts of losing money, it's very difficult to stop the momentum until the snowball explodes. So I'm going to walk cautiously. The most important thing is we have a viable project with the offtake that we have and the output that we have to ensure we can meet all obligations and still return a very healthy, positive cash flow. And so that is our backstop. What I'm doing for the expansion, I'm going to do cautiously. And, and correctly to ensure that when we hit the ground, we hit it running. I think that this for sure, for a Monty shareholder is very reassuring. There's nothing uh, worse than uh, going too fast in a ramp up, trying to get commercial production too fast and then trying to afterwards uh, solve the problems and they become obviously bigger and bigger as production grow um, and they create a domino effect. Uh, last question we have, we have, I think about 30 seconds. Uh, it, it, it's exactly in the same, uh, in, in the same way. Um, can you please confirm a Monty's expected volumes of ore mined and MTUs of stock Oxtons, trioxide produced at Sandong for 24, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, we would imagine that through the, the, the scrap and the consumption of our sites of material from Europe and in Sandong, we will produce somewhere between, depending on the market conditions, uh, three to 4,000 tons a year of tungsten oxide. My, my, my basically better judgment is saying that initially we will look for, and a plant will only have a capacity of 4,000 tons. It will not be bigger than this. Um, my initial expectation is we'll be somewhere in the region of two and a half to 3,000 tons to, to start. Uh, and that's on top of the 210,000 MTUs a year we produce for Planty Group in concentrate. So Perfect. all in all, about 440,000 MTUs in total of output. All right, From great, three. Lewis. So another amazing presentation. Very nice to follow their update. Uh, best of luck to your team um, and uh, continue the hard work. It's really, it's really looking outside from... Uh, awesome from our side here. Um, and for the next presentation, I'm sending back uh, to Matthias, uh, which will be introducing the next uh, presentation. So Matthias, it's all yours. Thank you again. Lewis. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, guys. Take care.